one or more of at least three things going on here with the with the rise in um, so-called trans identity. Now it's the it's um, a return to regressive gender norms. There's social contagion, and there's also some mental illness. Uh, and um, usually, the mental illness is wrapped up in the social contagion. Um, but the fact, um, you know, what <laughs> you already mentioned this, but often. You know, parents are told, well, if you don't support your child's trans identity, their chances of committing suicide go, go way up. Uh, and uh, what is in fact true, because that's not, uh, is that people who become convinced that they are trans are separately also very likely to have a number of other diagnosable mental concerns, such as um, depression and anxiety and, um, and, and various other things that have been named in the last 20 or 30 years. I'm not trying to trivialize them, but there's a, there's a lot of, there's a cluster of these sort of social anxiety things that include even the darkest of the dark um, and that can sometimes lead to, to people committing suicide um, that are clustered in among people looking for a home, looking for identity. And that looking for identity is a large part of what a lot of people are doing, looking for meaning and looking for identity in adolescence, right? And frankly, I'm just like, to be very honest, I don't, I don't recognize from myself, nor do I remember the friends that I had in high school, which included you, um, focusing so much on like identity. Like I was focusing on, I was focused on meaning. Like what, <laughs> what are we doing? What is this about? How do I make meaning in the world? And how do I make it a better place and make my life have had meaning? Yeah. And increasingly, frankly, it's a, it's a move towards the narcissistic. It's a move towards the in, interior. Like, oh, how do I figure out who I am and how I'm presented to the world? That's more about identity. And like, there's always, there's always some of those. Um, but it does feel like we're, adolescents now are expected to be focused on identity and not on meaning. And frankly, I think if we move towards more towards how is it that you can make meaning for yourself and for the world through your life, rather than how is it that you can um, make sure that everyone knows who you are as you understand it by making sure they get your made up pronouns correct, for instance, um, is, is, is that's not going to be nearly as good a choice for you. But um, regardless of whether or not the the anxiousness and the you know sort of debilitating um, concerns about how the world views you that are so common now that are associated also with the rise in um, social media and cell phones and not spending time moving your body and outside and actually physically engaging with your friends like in real space and time uh, it's all of that is sort of a rise in mental illness if you will and wrapped in the social contagion we get people who have the one thing that the guy on the side of the playground in your in your vignette goes like, that's the one that we're going to prioritize. That's the one that we're going to name and decide that that's not social contagion. That's not mental illness. That's the one. That's not a trend. That's, that's not a trend. That's reality. That's a reality that all of humanity until now has been missing. We never saw it before, but suddenly, um, suddenly in... 2013, something like that, uh, we're going to have this uptick and it's going to be happening. And the press secretary now... No, go ahead. The press secretary now refers to being to what is being done to children as treatment, treatment as in trans treatment. No, no, it's that's wrong. It's not treatment. We don't treat anorexia by taking away food from anorexics and telling them that they're fat. That's not how we treat anorexia. We don't treat people who cut themselves by supplying with sharp knives and private space in which to get in touch with their feelings. That's not how we treat people who cut themselves. This is the opposite of treatment. But the, con the confusion on, yes, the other side is they are revealing their true selves. They are, they are screaming for help into the abyss. And if you don't listen to them and honor their delusions, then they will kill themselves. No, no. There is separately suicidal ideation among some people, and those concerns need to be dealt with, but it is not this way. It's not this way. So I want to add a couple other things, and then I want to get back to what the press secretary said and why. Okay. Um, but not only are we 
identifying something that might be a fad on a playground and identifying it as, oh, that person is actually a victim of a kind of oppression that we are now morally obligated, all of us, to support them in something that we understand about them, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But we are also handing people who need two things from us, the inverse of the two things that they need. Yeah. A, we are handing them a weapon with which to get that which they want at this instant, which they may, in the present context, urgently want, and it may be their parents' obligation to say, no, honey, I'm going to have to override you on this one mm -hmm. because that's my job. My job is to create the environment that makes you into the adult that you can be and that you want to be, not to cater to what you think you want as a child. Sometimes you know what you want and sometimes you don't, and this is, this is the time when I need to say, no. So handing them yeah. the idea that, oh, well, if you allude to suicide, then you get what you want, mm -hmm. right? A, that's going to create terrible parenting because the parents can't counter it. And B, yep. it's going to create more suicide, right? It is going to turn this into something, an arms race, where they're going to have to be you know, a credible threat. And a certain number of people are going to lose their lives because of this cynical ploy. Yeah. A secondary contagion is being created by the people who are claiming to be trying to prevent just that. Right. But they're creating it. They are creating it. Now, the other thing is, and this is going to get back to the press secretary in a second, but the thing that people need, imagine the collection of truly well-intentioned women role models who are encountering the Heather-like girl who is expressing some boy-like preferences in the world and are motivated to think, oh God, we know who the good people have been in history and who the villains have been. We're going to be the good people. We're going to be as supportive as we can, mm -hmm. yada, yada, yada. Those people need to hear from women who maybe did travel a route more like yours, where they discovered actually they could do whatever they wanted, right? It's not even that you chose a, a you know, a male-like life. I mean, you have two kids, you've done the mother thing beautifully, and you've also been a, you know, a jungle biologist. You've chosen what you wanted. You can do that. Somebody needs to tell the girl who discovers that she has some things she wants to do that aren't traditionally girl things, but that's fine, right? And the problem is that those... We used to do that. Right. Those women who are supposed to be the role models for that girl who is in need of advice might find you and hear from you or somebody else who's got a similar story, right? But they're not going to because as soon as somebody, the environment, the political environment has been deliberately charged so that you are not an authoritative source on this because do you know what else is wrong with your perspective and then a list of phony things that mean that somehow you're a cryptic conservative despite having never been a conservative for a minute in your life, right? So I don't follow the right science. <laughs> I don't follow the right science. That's a doozy of a statement. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it's exactly that. Is The point is, this is just creating an environment where everybody needs somebody to tell them what they need to know rather than what they want to hear. And the rules that mean that as soon as you start listening to the person who knows what you need to know and might tell you, and the point is, well... You're not experiment. Are you listening to Bobby Kennedy Jr.? Do you realize he's an anti-vaxxer, right? That thing causes you not to hear from the person right. who has exactly the piece of information that you need to learn. 